In an interview with Stefan Colbert, former President Barack Obama was asked if he had a message to older generations still in control within the Democratic Party. And what he said stood out to me because he may have broken the hypocrisy meter. And it's just for him, of all people, to say what he is going to say, it's just ridiculous. Um, now, I can't play the video clip for you because this is a CBS clip and I don't want this to be copyright claimed. Uh, so we'll just listen to the audio. It's really quick. It's just a minute long. But listen to what Obama says when asked what his message is to older generations. Get out of the way. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> we, we, uh, I, I, I will say that um, I am so optimistic about uh, our kids and they're smarter than we were, they're more sophisticated, they're kinder, they're environmentally more conscious. They, they believed in stuff, as I write in the preface, that maybe we gave lip service to but didn't always want to live out because mm -hmm. it required some sacrifice. Or, uh, and, and you see them living out their commitments in really powerful ways. Um, but we have, to, we have to be willing to give them uh, the, the chance to remake institutions and change old habits um, so I'm th they make me optimistic I just want to make sure that we don't screw things up so bad that by the time uh, they're in charge that uh, you know it, it uh, becomes that much harder mind blown because Barack Obama literally intervened in the Democratic Party primary to stop the candidate that was overwhelmingly supported by young people. Had he not picked up the phone and made calls to uh, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, and told them to get behind Joe Biden, we would have somebody who is a different president right now other than Joe Biden. It would be Bernie Sanders. And let me remind you that Joe Biden struggled to get support of young people during the primaries. Now, you know, it seems like I'm crying over spilled milk, but for Obama to say this and just not expect to be called out, it's it's infuriating to me. And he has plausible de deniability because, you know, there's there's only reports that uh, confirmed that he talked to Pete Buttigieg, and we don't necessarily know what they said. We can't confirm that he said, hey, Pete, get out, back Joe Biden. But I mean, come on, this is the way that the game is played. All of a sudden, there are reports popping up that Obama talked to Beto O'Rourke, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, and then they're getting behind Joe Biden inexplicably. I mean, this isn't a coincidence. He wasn't being inconspicuous in very clearly moving heaven and earth to clear, you know, a path for Joe Biden. Had it not been for Bloody Monday, Bernie Sanders very likely could have been the president-elect right now. And, you know, people are going to say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're just an upset Bernie, bro. You're mad because you lost. Damn right. I'm a sore loser. I am a sore loser. Because guess what? When so much is on the line, I mean, you can't not be a sore loser. People's lives are at stake. And Joe Biden is just not going to cut it. He's stacking his cabinet with warmongers and corporatists like Neera Tandon. So I'm sorry, but when we had a chance to actually elect someone who cared, Obama is the individual who maybe single-handedly stopped that from happening. Now, look, I blame Bernie Sanders for what happened as well, because he should have anticipated shenanigans from the Democratic Party establishment, including Barack Obama. But still, what Obama did was intervene to stop young people from getting the candidate that they supported. But let's listen to what Obama says here. Young people are smarter than we were. They're more sophisticated. They're kinder. They're environmentally more conscious. So, you know, it seems as if he really trusts us and trusts our judgment. Uh, and he says that we believe in stuff that his generation gave lip service to but didn't always want to live out. But you didn't trust us because you intervened to stop us, to stop Bernie Sanders, the candidate who young people overwhelmingly supported, from winning. Uh, he also says we have to give young people the chance to remake institutions and change old habits. Again, we tried to do that with Bernie Sanders, but you you stopped that. You intervened to stop that, to tell everyone to get behind Joe Biden. Obama was able to accomplish what the GOP establishment wished they could have pulled off during the 2016 Republican Party primaries. He also says that young people make him optimistic. I just want to make sure we don't screw things up so bad. By the time they're in charge, it becomes that much harder. Well, uh, too late, buddy. You did just that. 
you did just that. And it's much worse. Like, the thing about Barack Obama is that a lot of us, like, we found our political identity at the time when he was running for president. And I, you know, I became politically active around 2007, 2008, because I grew up seeing the Iraq war and how disastrous it was. So I thought Obama would be different. I supported him over Hillary Clinton because of his anti-war position. He was against the Iraq war. Hillary Clinton was not. But what did he do? He duped an entire generation of millennials into supporting him and what happened? He made all of us see that the Democratic Party establishment, no matter what kind of rhetoric they use, they don't give a damn about us. They're going to say one thing, and as soon as they get into power, they're going to do something entirely different. Obama went on to describe himself as basically a moderate Republican. And we saw that in action. I mean, did his health care plan reflect what we wanted in single pair? No, he literally adopted a right-wing healthcare plan to appease Republicans, and they still didn't support that. So he showed us that uh, <laughs> the Democratic Party is completely and utterly full of shit. And he made an entire generation, my generation, cynical of politics. And in a way, I'm thankful that he allowed us to take off the blinders, right, and see the Democratic Party establishment for what it really is. But for you, after betraying all of us, betraying an entire generation, turning people off to politics after getting them activated. For you to say something like this, oh, old people, get out of the way. Why don't you take your own fucking advice, Obama? Your legacy is garbage. How many families did you uh, destroy in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia? So nobody wants to hear from you right now. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. Uh, someone who's a former Obama Kool-Aid drinker doesn't want to hear from you right now. And I think it's incumbent on millennials who were fucked over by Obama to explain to people why this individual is not your friend. I mean, if you look at the response to Obama within the Democratic Party, like just the base, they still love him and worship him and they hang on to every single word that he says. But this individual is not your ally. He's your enemy and he is to be opposed. He's the individual who should be getting out of the way for the future gener generation to come in. But Obama really is the final boss of liberalism because so long as he has legitimacy and influence in the Democratic Party primary, we're not going to get a President AOC. We're not going to get a President Nina Turner because we now know that all it takes is Barack Obama to make some phone calls and then everyone just rolls over and dies for whoever Obama chooses to anoint. How despicable is that? I mean, stand for something. Stand up to Obama, but nobody wants to attack Obama, even AOC you know, was doing apologia for Obama in a CNN interview because it's like, you know, you, you just, you can't say anything about the God, Obama, the Holy One. Otherwise, you know, you are delegitimized. But I'm here to say, fuck that and fuck Obama. Obama is a terrible human being who should share a jail cell with Donald Trump for committing crimes against humanity. And anyone who worships him is either ignorant or morally bankrupt. And that's all I'll say. We have to at every turn educate people about who Barack Obama is. Take the blinders off and acknowledge this individual is a war criminal and he is going to do everything in his power to stop future generations from remaking institutions. But yet... He says, oh, let's, let's let the new generation take over. Yeah, why don't you let that happen? Why didn't you let that happen? And going forward, he's not going to let that happen because Obama still is in control of the Democratic Party. And so long as that is the case, change is going to be incredibly difficult to achieve. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man. man.